Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the lecture series on bioenergy. Yesterday we talked about in our previous classes about photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. How photosystem 1, photosystem 2 varies? I told you then in the space of location of places, they are located at different locations. But there is one more thing to add up to that. Both photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 stays at a different kind of reduction potential or redox potential. Each one of these photosystems have a different ability to lose electron. One lose faster than the other, but they, how such things are being achieved. So, the way photosystems develop is that, say for example, a system may have a mix of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, but that number can be varied. Say for example, if I say each photosystem is made up of 100 molecules of chlorophyll. So, there may be a photosystem where there will be say, so one option is at 50-50. So, 50 chlorophyll A, 50 chlorophyll B. But anything which shifts, say for example, one has say 10 chlorophyll A, other will have say 90 chlorophyll B or the and think the other way, reverse. One has 10 chlorophyll B and 100 chlorophyll A. Now, look at the spectrum here, back to the spectrum, what I just refer you. Now, based on that number, the spectra, the overall light absorbing ability is going to shift. Again, look at the spectra carefully, look at this spectra. So, so this is the zone for chlorophyll, the pink one is the for the chlorophyll B and the green one is for chlorophyll A. Now, say for example, in your system, you have a photosystem where there are out of 100 molecules, just this is just for your understanding sake, I am telling 100 molecules, do not think there are millions of such molecules which are present there. But they have a finite number for photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, but their proportionate number of chlorophyll A and B are different. In photosystem 1, there may be a different proportion of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Similarly, in photosystem 2, there will be a different proportion of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And these differences completely change their optical properties their light absorbing potential and the way and their redox potential. These are apart from, so there are three things now I am adding from the previous two lectures. Point one, we have two photosystems and we will talk about how this was being discovered. Actually, it was discovered like that only, that way I am telling you the experiment, uh, the way I am telling you, the, giving you this explanation. Point one, there are two different photosystems photosystem 1, photosystem 2. And as I will proceed further, they are indicated by different wavelength P680, P700. We will come to that. That is basically telling and there is correspondence. So, that essentially telling you that which one is which one, photosystem 1, photosystem 2. Second thing, they are spatially located at different location. Third important aspect is that they have different proportion of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Fourth, they are standing at different redox potential. So, in other words, their light absorbing power, light absorbing ability and electron ejection ability is entirely different. These three or four concepts, I really wish get clear in your brain because that will be a big help to understand the whole basic architecture of photosynthesis. Okay. So, from here, let us coming back to the slide. So, we talked about the disensitized solar cell, we will be dealing with it. You remember, we talked about the reaction center. So, this is the topic what we will be dealing now is photons absorb, absorbed. Okay absorbed by many chlorophyll, CHL stands for chlorophyll, funnels it into a reaction center. A 
a reaction center. So, in the last class, I told you that light is falling, it is not that at every point there is a reaction taking place. Each one of the chlorophyll molecules are getting oxidized by leaving an electron hitting the next molecule, but the real reaction center is only unique. And I also mentioned in previous classes that you really cannot locate the reaction center, but how that was discovered. So, I will put in a statement for you that will help you to realize that how that was being discovered. So, basically the output of photosynthesis. So, before you get into that, just before I put the statements there, the output of photosynthesis is measured. So, if you look at look back at the basic reaction CO2 plus H2O, CH2O plus oxygen. So, the output is measured by the output of oxygen. So, if you have a probe by virtue of which you can measure the output of oxygen, then you can measure the rate of photosynthesis. So, in other word, so let us add one more thing into it, light. So, if I am giving this much quanta of light, say I give x quanta of light, then what is the y mole of oxygen which is evolved. So, this is how the efficiency of photosynthesis, photosynthetic efficiency is being determined. Now, what is important here, so moving on to the next slide out here. So, measurement of the dependence of the rate of photosynthesis on the intensity of the illumination that it increases linearly at low intensities and reaches a saturating value at high intensities. So, this was discovered that was something very interesting graph for you to look at. So, this was what I just now explained the rate of photosynthesis. Okay, and the light intensity. So, what you are seeing is that this is where the limiting value is being approached. And uh, followed by this, so as we talked about the a saturating value is observed in a strong light because chemical reaction utilizing the absorbed photon become rate limiting. This experiment provided the first intimation that photosynthesis can be separated into a light reaction and a dark reaction. But what is much earlier than that? If this was one area around 1932, there was an experiment which was done by Robert Emerson. and uh, William Ar Arnold. This experiment was really critical. What they did that they as I showed you in the previous slide measured oxygen as a function of uh, and they use so chlorella what they, they have used okay. chlorella cells is basically a, an algae. So, they measured the oxygen by exposing the flash of light measured oxygen with as I showed you in the previous slide flash of light. And what they observed was was very interesting the observation is one of the critical experiment. Uh, saturating light flash. led to the production of only one molecule of oxygen per 2500 chlorophyll 
molecules. This is that critical statement which is significant. So, when 2500 chlorophyll molecules are illuminated, what you are seeing there is a single oxygen molecule is being produced. It means that every chlorophyll molecule is not leading to the reaction. So, it means that, so based on that and several other experiment it was proposed that what is essentially is happening is something like this out here. So, first again revisiting the reaction center concept where so, these are the chlorophyll molecule which are sitting at different reaction center chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B respective of it and when the light is falling like this. So, it is kind of traveling through and then there is one particular center which we call as the reaction center and the way it possibly works one of the currently accepted theory is that. So, there is a light is a light energy which and then there are hopping of energy transfer taking place this level and eventually it reads to the reaction center. Okay. So, and these are the chlorophyll which are sitting at the ground state and these are the chlorophyll which are sitting. So, these are the chlorophyll at ground state and these are the chlorophyll which are sitting at the higher state. So, this is how by very simple experiments back in the early 1900, it was discovered that the whole process is not one is to one, like one light will fall on a chlorophyll and will generate an oxygen, it is not like that. So, you need a cluster of chlorophyll molecules to initiate the reaction of oxygen formation and simultaneously these are the reactions which laid the foundation for two kind of reaction, the light reaction and the dark reaction taking place in the whole photosynthetic apparatus. Okay. So, now coming back we will move on to the next slide where we will talk about one second. Okay. So, we talked about another concept. So, the very basic reaction if you again go back to the basic reaction, I will keep on following this basic reaction because that is where lies all most of our understanding. So, this is where the light is falling okay. and uh, what we are talking about CH 2 O plus oxygen. Now, the question is which was posed was how oxygen is getting evolved, is it coming from carbon dioxide or is it from water. Again, look at the reaction carefully, you will realize what I am trying to ask you. So, here is the oxygen which is getting evolved. How you prove that this is coming from here or this is coming from here? It can come from both sources, right? Because both have oxygen, you can split the carbon dioxide, you can release the oxygen, you can split the water, you can release the oxygen. So, there is no one has told the molecule that you have to come from this spot. So, how to prove it? Now, we know of course, in the beginning we said that is the water is kind of getting split and oxygen is what, but how that reaction took place, how that was kind of being discovered. So, the way it was done, I will just put two reactions in front of you. You remember I told you that there are hydrothermal vents where there are no sunlight, yet life does evolve and those are the regions which are rich in hydrogen sulphide. Those of you have just forgotten just go back to those lectures and realize because it has some link and that is why I purposefully made it a point to bring this aspect for you that why I mentioned that thing out there. So, let us put the two reactions out here which will help you to realize one of the very very seminal contribution. So, so what we are claiming is this okay. oxygen evolved in photosynthesis okay oxygen evolved in photosynthesis synthesis comes from water and how to prove it okay comes from 
water. So, in front of you I am putting two reactions now, CO2, carbon dioxide, 2 H 2 O, water in the presence of light making C H 2 O plus oxygen plus, okay, you can have water whatever, okay, fine. Now, C O 2 plus 2 H 2, now you replace this oxygen with sulfur, which is, you remember now the hydrothermal vent, which is rich in hydrogen sulphide and C H 2 O plus 2 sulfur plus H 2 O. This was the reaction which led to the understanding of a generic reaction. What is the generic reaction? Now, I am drawing the generic reaction for you. Is this oxygen H 2 O, what we are claiming as the currently the electron source H 2 S also can be electrons. So, instead of H 2 O, you put H 2 S and what you are getting the output is sulphur. So, essentially when in the beginning I told you that uh, role of uh, when we are splitting the water, it is just an output which is coming out because it was not really, maybe it was never planned. The only what nature needed was an electron and it was looking for a very, I should say a source for electron which is very easily available. So, one of the easily available source it may have found in water, but he never thought that this will lead to the evolution of oxygen and that was one of the biggest event which happened in history when from the whole life form moves from anaerobic life form to aerobic. So, essentially what we are telling that possibly very early in the environment, this was the kind of reactions which were happening. Uh, earth which was rich in hydrogen sulphide, rich in all sorts of nasty gases and that is where probably life evolved. And at some point as earth was cooling down, as everything was calming down, the hydrogen sulphide level was going down and nature was in a hunt for another perennial electron source and nature's perennial electron source became water. We do not know how many billions of years it took nature to make that transformation from H 2 S to possibly water, but what nature did not anticipated or maybe it anticipated, we do not know that the outcome of it will be evolution of oxygen and that was a turning point because, because of the evolution of oxygen earlier, this is the world war which was anaerobic and all the organisms which are surviving were adapted to survive in the absence of oxygen, but with the evolving oxygen most of the anaerobic species which were present on the floor of earth slowly started getting extinct because they could not withstand the oxygen pressure or oxygen tension. So, possibly it is at that juncture what we see the modern day world from non oxygenated environment to oxygenated environment or a shift from anaerobic to our current day aerobic world. And this evolving oxygen leads to the evolution of species which are adapted to oxygen environment. Uh, still there are several 
microbial life forms which grows in absence of oxygen, in absence of light deep inside the hydrothermal vents and a life form very similar to Martian environment, environment in the Mars where it is emulated that, that where it is believed that similar environment exists as in the hydrothermal vents, where even in the absence of oxygen such process takes place and that was the reason why I wanted to show you. So, the generic reaction, now I will put the, in the light of this wisdom, we will put the generic reaction and this is very critical for all the biomass producing mechanism available on earth, H2, now I am putting A, I am not putting O or S. In the presence of light leads to CH2O plus 2A, again I am just circling the A plus H2O. Okay. Now, this one is, let us put is the hydrogen acceptor leading to the biomass formation and this one, the contrary, this particular molecule is your hydrogen donor. In other words, this is the source for all kind of reduction reaction and CH2O, now I am putting it in green because this is the biomass what we are talking about is your reduced acceptor because this is getting reduced because of the addition of hydrogen to carbon dioxide and this one is your dehydrogenated donor. Why it is a dehydrogenated donor? Because hydrogen has been removed whether it was a H2S or whether it is a water, oh, sorry, hydrogenated donor. It is very interesting to note that One second, let me. The hydrogen donor H2A is H2O in green plants, and H2S is in photosynthetic sulfur bacteria. So, this is the second reaction what I just now showed you. This is basically the sulfur bacteria, and this is what is happening in the green plants. these are the two critical things what we are dealing with and <clears throat> oxygen evolution would then be a necessary consequence of this dehydrogenation process. These dehydrogenation process what is happening out here leads to their oxygen or sulphur. Okay. So, the availability in 1914 especially of different kind of heavier isotopes with the radioactivity was already discovered. These kind of processes could be mapped with different kind of oxygen isotope. It was being observed that indeed the oxygen is getting evolved from the water not from the carbon dioxide and that is why this reaction is very, very important for you guys to mark that how these things are happening with this and we will take up each part of it in our subsequent lectures.